Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, this is going to be a teaching moment that every electrician needs to listen. Prentice, my students, listen. Because this has come back to bite us in the butt. Now, I, this is going to be a little teachable moment at first, and then I'm going to jump into the video. But a couple things. First off, I'm going to have a very talkative conversation with you so if you don't want to hear this part then there'll be a timestamp down below maybe you can skip to the problem so I'm gonna put the phone down we're gonna talk and then I'm going to show you the problem and how we fix it or how I'm gonna fix it here in a second a couple things first of all three night flashlights always comes through I, I still you know I'm not sponsored by them I've done reviews for them flashlights are amazing now I have no microphone. This was a service call. This was a job that I've done a year and a half ago. I was up here because my electrician that was helping me did not label the panel. So I came up here and I labeled every single one of these boxes. The door behind me, this one right over here, that one was not working. Why wasn't it working? Well, there was no wire to it. Well, there was a wire to it, but it wasn't landing on the breaker. So I guess there was no power to it, I should say. I had to fix all that. I had to add a breaker. Crazy. So this is what I found. When I first came here, this is the problem. First came here, right over here, on this wall over there, there was a GFCI doing the same thing. I found that the neutral and the ground were touching over here. Uh, that's the only thing I found, which kept tripping the GFCI. If you know about a metal box, neutral touching the box, there's an imbalance. So blah blah blah. That was one a that was a problem that I had before uh, in this box. Fixed it, no problem. So as I was going around, which we're going to go to the other side in a few, same thing. Except GFCI would never reset. I went through one box, pulled it out. The electrician that was helping me, he um, just bypassed the GFCI altogether. Put it on the load side, so it would feed everything hot with no issues. I guess he couldn't figure out. I don't know. I don't know what the deal was. Um, anyway, it, it's just one of them things that happened. Word of advice. Get people that you can trust. Because not only was that a problem, there are boxes. Four square boxes with RS covers, raised steel. The raised steel covers I'll show you here I'm talking about. I can't really show you any pictures. Um, maybe I'll be able to zoom in and show you, but there's no screws in the RS covers. They've got to be in there. He left them out. He left the ones out up high, like way up there, because he thought I would never be coming back here, I guess, to see the work he did. So long story short on that, practice like you play, guys. Put all the screws in. It's code for one. Another thing that I like, it's not code, if you're an electrician, you're watching this and you're saying, well, you're right, it's not good. It's not good. But on every box that we've done through here, I always, I'm very redundant about putting my grounds with the ground screw in here. Do you have to do it? No. Because technically, as long as you follow the code, you're fine. But for the boxes that I have done, there are ground screws in here. The ones that he did, which we're going to go and look at a couple of them, like at least two for sure. Um... No ground screws. Is it a big thing? No, I'm not going to be mad at that because it's not code. I just, I'm very redundant. What happens if you lose a ground somewhere? But the pipe comes loose. You know, that, that's just my thing. It's just, it's just me. And I'm very redundant. After I figured out, like I said, the thing wouldn't reset. I went and I opened the light box, the switch box. And uh, found that, well, at first I didn't know what I found. Because it was very late. I was trying to get out of there. Opened the box. I took the neutrals loose. Put my tick tracer on there. Turn the circuit on. On the circuit, it was 120 volts. I used the meter, but I found that it was hot with this. And then I went and got a meter. Found it was hot. I figured it was just a loaded neutral looking to come back to go to the light. Well, that's not the case. I wasn't, wasn't thinking clearly, and it wasn't a loaded neutral after all. I mean, it was technically a loaded neutral because it was looking to go somewhere, but crazy. Crazy. So I buttoned everything back up, put it exactly the way it was, turned the breaker off. Nobody used a circuit. Three days later, which is today, came back, did the same thing, pulled everything out, and said, this time, we're going to go back over here, and I'm going to show you what I did. I'm going to take you step by step, 
It's a very good learning process. Here is my number one, in case I forget to say it, my number one tip. People don't think about this, but mark your neutrals for what circuit you're using. This is all in conduit here. This is all conduit. So I had to take every single neutral loose to figure out this. I used my tick tracer to find the neutral. Now you're probably saying, huh? I've done a video exactly on this Klein ET450, I think it is. I think it's ET450, but I did a, a, a video on this, how to find circuits. Saved me a pile of work. But, like I said, I found the circuit. I'm gonna show you real quick. I'm gonna show you here, while we're standing here. I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna show you. We're gonna come back and we're gonna show you one more time, just in case somebody misses it. So, I'm gonna pause the video, flip the camera around, which is my cell phone, because I don't have a camera because I wasn't planning on doing a video, but this is too good not to record. I wanted to show you what's going on in this panel. I'm also gonna to talk to you about a couple other things that happened in this panel. I have literally a list with a little legal notepads about this tall that is full of things that I had to fix, that I saw. Homeowner didn't see it, but I saw it. So anyway, regardless, let me show you what I'm talking about. Take you back over here. We'll walk you through everything I did to this point to figure out how the hell I got to this point to figure out what the problem was. So stand by, let me show you real quick, and then we'll uh, get on with the video. Let's look here at how I had to get to this point. So as you see, I have all the neutrals. I had the breaker off. All the neutrals are out. Even though there's some landed here, like this one, I know where it's going. It's just going right to there. So I know, and it ends right over there. So I know for a fact there's no more here at all. This one here is still landed, and, and the reason why, because it goes right there, I know for a fact. So, leads me to my next thing. How did I find which breaker was, or which neutral was which? So, the first neutral I found was this one right here, and it's not hooked up right now, as you see, because I already know that this neutral right here, and this particular pipe only goes down through and around, and it stops over there at that pipe going up. Right in that box is it. So I knew for a fact that once I saw that part and this was beeping, I knew something was wrong right off the bat. And I was only hoping that my suspicions were right. So I came back and I made sure. See, nothing, nothing. Obviously there's nothing here, but I'm gonna show you anyway, because these only go to right here because they're too short. Okay, so let's go here. Boom. Okay, so I know now that this is my neutral, which it should be, because it goes up in this pipe, which goes up into this box that's up there. And then it follows all the way down. It goes to a box that's way over there. See if I can zoom in. Right over there. It changes the flex because it's only one circuit going over there, the one that I needed, or what actually he did all that, but the one that we needed, I should say. And then it went into the other room. So let me take you over there and show you what I'm talking about. As we move along right here, this is where I told you, see, this is circuit four. So right away I knew that this is the pipe that went all the way around to the panel where I told you the neutral was to begin with. The very first one, it just goes right up in there and it connects to these doors, which is the same circuit. So. Oh, sorry, not the same circuit. It's the same same piping system, rather, the raceway. So, went into here. This is where my loaded neutral was, which is the first one I told you, which is that circuit I just showed you. So this is that this is that neutral. Doesn't need to go anywhere else, literally. It only needs to stop right here. That's it. Doesn't need to go anywhere else. This is the other neutral. This is the one that I needed to carry up to these lights to have them switched. But this neutral right here goes to my GFCI. So the GFCI circuit seven was coming here. Circuit four neutral was coming here. Well, they were together, which is no problem, right? Because neutral's neutral no matter what you do until you put a GFCI in there with it. So just so you know, there's receptacles there. That's not my work. Receptacle, receptacle. Receptacle, as you see, circuit seven, and then this one right there. And there is my Klein, I believe it's ET450, I'm pretty certain. I'm pretty certain it is, yeah, ET450. 
So this is the transmitter part of it. It's transmitting. I just put it on the ground and I put it on that neutral. And there is that neutral. Look at there. See? Because it's it's sending a tone out, so as you can see. So this is how I found it. This was the problem right here. This neutral is over in the box. I just was at the very first one with the switches. It goes over there. Sevens. Sevens neutral. It also goes to there and then on through to the lights. And circuit four originates over there too. So that tells me one thing right off the bat. That tells me that one or two things happened. Either somebody, my electrician that was helping me, was not very cautious of what he was doing or he was and he thought, why would it matter? It's just a neutral. A lot of people that don't understand how GFIs work with different neutrals, when you see that unbalance, it ain't working. And proof positive right there. It did not work because you have two neutrals. One is going to circuit four and then this circuit seven, well, there's an imbalance. It just doesn't, it doesn't work like that. So you've got to keep your neutral straight. Make sure you definitely always label your neutrals. I can't preach that enough. Nothing in that panel is labeled. Some of that is my fault. Some of that we did pull together. Some of it we didn't. But at the same time, lesson well learned. What if that was a 40 space panel or two 40 space panels? That would be really screwed. Especially if I shared a bunch of neutrals, which we did a few on, but not many. Thank you for tuning in. Let this be a lesson to you. Make sure you always label your wires. Very, very important, guys. Share the neutrals, double pull breaker. I'm suggesting if you do share the neutrals also, make sure somewhere you write down what it is, not just, you know, circuit 10, circuit nine, okay? Write down somewhere inside the panel. So somebody that opens that panel, it was like, why is there double breaker? It's gotta be a 240 volt circuit. People that don't know, well, thank a 240 volt circuit somewhere, like a well or a hot water heater or whatever, an air conditioner. I mean, you don't know. So make it dummy proof. It could potentially save your life, somebody else's life. It could not cause you to have to work over like me for free to fix a problem that shouldn't have even happened to begin with. A couple of things I got forgot to say. So I'm gonna come back in the video here. When I got up here, this panel right here is fed from a panel way down the hill. I, I don't know how many feet it is, it's, it's, it's a few. And what happened is there was a main disconnect which came off to a panel, 40 space panel, which is technically the sub panel. That panel fed this panel up here. So off this building, it has a disconnect outside, just a reg regular old emergency disconnect, off and on, that's it. What had happened was when I, when I finished the service, thought, when I almost finished the service, I should say, what had happened was this. I told my electrician guy to make sure you bond the can. Don't bond the neutrals because in a sub panel, you don't do that. Well, if I can put this video clip in here, I will, so you can see. So this screw right here was not in here. Now it has to be in here because the can needs to be bonded, redundancy, but it has to be like that. So as you see, it's in there. The neutral side is not because it's, it's completely separated. Remember this song, you gotta keep it separated. Hey, hey, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so that's all I'm gonna say about that. So now it's completely right. That was pretty bad. So I fixed it and uh, it's way better now. But in this panel right here, the panel that is in this building, the actual branch feeder panel with all the breakers in it, the ground bar was not bonded to the can here. So remember I said redundancy. I've always, I've always said that, but you still have to do it by code. There was no ground screw in here. And the bar to the neutral was still together. So I had to take all that off. And the bar to the neutral, I don't even know what happened to it, but anyway, we took it off. So there was a lot of things, you know, that were wrong here and I had to fix it. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave it here. 
the first video I did to figure out how this meter would send that signal over so you can see how all that works. I'm going to leave a card right here. Click on that, guys. I'll catch you in that video. That's a very informative video. It's pretty quick. Shows you how to set that thing up to make it work. Save yourself a lot of time, guys. If you like what you see here, like and subscribe. God bless, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Have a great day.